Welcome back to another episode of Starting Out, a podcast where we share our stories of starting out in this great big world. We talk about our highlights, trials and tribulations, and lessons we've learned along the way. So as you are starting your journey, we hope you can learn from us. So Cor, what's the topic for today? Our topic that we will be talking about today is how to invest as a woman. That is such a great topic for today because there has been news about people investing left and right in this pandemic. And we wanted to give a perspective as two females that are under 25 investing in this stock market. Exactly. Yeah. And I think we have a lot of stories to share today, a lot of ups and downs in our journey and just in general, how we felt transitioning to where we are now and how we're feeling with our newly acquired investing skills now. Yes, that is so true. So before we are investing gurus, which we are not, just kidding. By no means we are not. By no means we're not investing gurus. We're not telling you what to do. We're just giving you one perspective of how we got into the investing world and how we are navigating it essentially. So, Cor, how did you get started in investing? Before even investing, investing, it's like, how did you hear about it? Uh, Mm -hmm. How did you even got introduced to it? Yeah, I think how I first heard about it or how I even first even thought about putting money into any type of investment accounts was really, truly last year when COVID first hit. So when that happened, obviously, I was very bored I'm sure we all were because we were all stuck at home, locked down and everything. You know the drill. But I guess what really struck out to me during that period was because I was so bored, I was saying, okay, maybe I could start thinking about investing and start truly digging deeper into what all of my friends were talking about, what I kept hearing on the news. And because of that, I think that is what motivated me to really think about investing, to read blogs, to listen to podcasts, specifically about Canadian investing, because obviously you have different accounts and different nuances between the States and Canada. So I made sure I really listened to podcasts and read blogs and different books that were more so focused on Canadian investings and Canadian accounts and etc. And then because of that, As I kept going along with it, that's when I started to gain more knowledge and that started to become more fulsome for me. Yeah, like a lot of people did start investing during the pandemic. I think it's a great time because you have so much downtime, right? I feel like investing was such a thing that you put off and you waited, at least for me, right? Like there's a lot of research that goes into it. Like, how does it work? What is it? How do you get into it? So that also takes prep work. Mm-hmm. It's quite interesting on my end because I didn't really understand how you can even buy a stock. It was very mysterious to me. So my introduction to it was I was like, okay, I need to set aside X amount of money and mm-hmm. one day I'll go to the bank and I'll ask the bank teller or my funds manager to go yeah. invest. <laughs> That's yeah. literally how I thought about it. I was like, okay, well, one day I will literally go to the bank and do that. I think what really changed was this boom of technology. One we we're yeah. going to talk about very soon, which is Well Simple. Shout out to them. When Well Simple came out, it was so eye opening because now my introduction to investing has been almost fast forward. I thought I had to do this in my 30s or 40s. Yeah. Right. But now as a 20 year old, well, then 20 year old, I was like, oh, I can do this right now. Like there yeah. is no barriers now for me to be like, OK, I have to set money aside, wait until I can yeah. pay the high fees that these banks are charging me to go invest. I have the ability to do it right on my phone mm-hmm. in the comfort of my own home. And that mm-hmm. was so revolutionary because it was like the power was in my hands now it's up to me if i wanted to download the app understand what they were trying to offer me read about the blogs read about other people trying to invest on well simple like you did 
Mm -hmm. So it was really interesting because I think, like, really fast forward, I was like, okay, no, we're going to do this now. And we're going to do it when I get my first job. We're going to start putting myself on the right path. I think it's a great point that you brought up, how your initial thinking was you had to have a lump sum of money, first of all, to invest as opposed to $10 per month. But you thought it was like an initial, like huge amount, like tuition payment amount in the first four months, you know. And I think that's a really good point. On top of that, you thought you had to physically go into a bank like RBC, BMO, etc. And then actually talk to a funds manager or talk to a financial advisor. And I think those are two really great points that you brought up, which really resonate with me and how I initially thought of investing as well. So my dad was 10 years ago, he was so into investing. He had all the books on stocks, mutual funds, etc, etc. I remember him saying, oh, I'm going to RBC this week to talk to my advisor. And me being 12 years old, I'm like, do I need to do this? Right? And it got me thinking, right? When I first started, I I was thinking, I'm like, this is what my dad did. Every weekend or every two weeks, he would go into RBC at this branch. At this time, he had to book an appointment and he would talk about X, Y, Z. And then he would put money into that. So when obviously when I first started, I was like, okay, to Nick's point, I had to put in a lump sum of money, which is not true at all. And B, I had to go physically go in. But that's another alternative that you can do. But obviously now, like Neek said, there's so many apps out there that you could just do from the comfort of your own home, right? So like what we use, we use well simple, but there's also Quest Trade. There's also so many other platforms that is free, that is very low commission charge. And because of that, I think that's a, those are two really great points that you brought up. And I think it really resonates with me and how kind of I initially thought of investing to obviously now where we kind of have an alternative view from where we first started. So before you even like started, what were your goals? Like when you actually downloaded your app, like what did you think? Like, okay, what am I going to do with this money if I were to make that beautiful, you know, I like that beautiful graph when it's like, when you're 56, you're going to have so <laughs> Our finger loves to drag that and be like, when I'm 45, I would have doubled my income. And then keep going and going. I would have 10 x it. Like, mm-hmm. when you're going into that section, what do you imagine you doing for yourself with that money? The thing is, when I first started, I actually had no idea what I was saving up for. Mm. I remember when I signed up for Wealth Simple, and they asked me, what is your goal? I remember this one specific question. They're like, what are you saving for? A house, a down payment on like a, your mortgage, or retirement, or a car. I'm like, I, I have no idea. And I think that's another really good tip is when you first start investing, it's you don't need to already know what you're going to use that money for because the chances you obviously won't just because you don't know when you're going to need the money. You don't know how much you want to put in and you don't even know how much you will get in return, right? Based off like which portfolio that you choose. So I think when I first started, I picked a really random goal. I just said I, I was going to buy a car. <laughs> you I, have I'm a like, car? I do. <laughs> I have a car. Like, I, I honestly had no idea what I was saving for. And I felt as I was going through the months of investing and I started to reflect what I was actually putting that money in for, I knew In my terms, I was investing for the long-term game. I am not smart enough and I am not knowledgeable enough to play the short-term game to make like a really quick 100, 200 bucks within a week and then sell my stock. I am not like that at all. I am less risky than that, but I am in it for the long run, I'd say. So thinking about my goals for the long run is, you know, maybe living downtown Toronto maybe let's be neighbors right maybe owning my own house 
saving up for dog fees in the future. We'll cut it right now. That's the best investment you can ever make. <laughs> what are you investing? Exactly. A backyard for the dog. Facts. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah. So I think my tip would be you don't need to right off the bat know what your money is going to be put in for. You just keep hearing, oh, just keep saving, keep saving. But you don't want to keep holding cash. Right. So I think this is a good way to really just put your money in and put a little bit in at a time. And then after a couple of months that you really start investing and you really start to think, okay, what do I want this money for in the future? then you could either wrap up your investments or kind of tweak it accordingly. But that was my mindset. I don't know. That was my mindset when I first got started. But Nix, how about yourself? What were your initial goals? That is such a good mindset to go into because I think it's almost like a gateway into Mm -hmm. your grasp of financial literacy and then also of how you want to manage your finances in life there's like many things that are tied to money like many many things where you're gonna live what are you gonna do or what job you want like yeah those things are tied within money and when i first started i also had no goals mm-hmm. i just was like it is something that i need to do because if you understand inflation holding cash in your bank yeah. account it's not really going to do anything for you. If anything, I think you're going to start losing money of how inflation works. Yeah. You're, the power of the dollar is not going to work the same way it did 10 years mm-hmm. ago. So I was like, okay, well, I got to do something with it. And as I started with my journey, I have this funny thing called Finance Sundays now where oh. I actually do my finances. <laughs> Me too. There you go. Finance Sundays. Did I tell you about that? You did. You did. <laughs> you did. And I think I didn't see it as a big goal, but I think it was coming from a place where it's like, well, I actually don't want to worry about money. Maybe like the underlying goal is like, I just don't want to worry about money. I want to make sure that I am in control of the situation and that it's no longer in control of me. The understanding of like, okay, when I invest, I am doing something positive, right? In the long term, I might not know what I need, right? Yeah. Because, hey, my, something might happen. What happens if I have an ailment, right? Mm-hmm. And I need money to buy, God forbid, a wheelchair or something, right? Mm-hmm. At least I knew I had something set aside. Or what happens if I was like, oh, I need to actually go buy a house now because my life goals have changed and I want to buy a piece of asset. So it's like if I need to go buy something, I wouldn't want to have like the stress of being like, I need now to like figure out how to get this money. And then also, has my money been working for me or have I been working for the money? Right. Because that's what investing is. It's like the money is making it work for you. And then I think one bigger thing out of it was snowball, I find. Yeah. Right. Once you start, Finance Sunday started finance sunday started then i started thinking about okay what is the big goal out here Mm -hmm. do i want a million dollars do i have realistic goals i i would love million (laughs) dollars yeah and then also it's like okay if you want to get to a million dollars how are you gonna get there right Mm -hmm. is it my nine to five job that's gonna get me there is it doing other things is it investing it's okay to have no goals at first because if you step in the right direction things will snowball and things will actually come to you. I'll leave it on the last note. If I didn't start investing, yeah. I would have been way too scared to even mm-hmm. think about how am I going to finance certain of my my wildest dreams, which is like maybe one day I want to have a house. Maybe one day I want to like start a business properly with like products and all that. And then also, like I wanted to get into dividend stocks right there is ways right we always talk about in our finance classes where like people can make a little bit of money off Mm -hmm. of dividends and it's a very passive way because once you start buying it there's like quarterly earnings so things like Mm -hmm. that it's like not a big goal but Mm -hmm. it snowballs into a bigger goal in the end of like okay 
It's financial yeah. independence. It's financial literacy. It's taking control of things in your own hands so that I can be responsible for it. It's not the world yeah. that's responsible for my shortcomings. Mm-hmm. I love all of the points that you just made where you just said. <laughs> this podcast now is, <laughs> this podcast is just us two hyping each other. I love that. Girl, honestly, mm-hmm. I totally envision myself having that mindset as well. Like, I totally understand where you're coming from. And I love how you talk about a snowball effect because it it really is, right? Because once you get the ball rolling, like, it doesn't really stop. But those are really great points that you made. And I especially love, what did you call it? Finance Sundays? Finance Sundays. Finance Sundays, yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Which I've actually adopted on my Sundays as well. But I think that's a really great point where you talked about being in control of the situation, but don't let the situation take control of you. Mm -hmm. So that definitely struck a chord with me because I remember when I first tried starting Finance Sundays or Finance Saturdays, whatever, back in university, I would be so scared to log into my bank account to see what was the balance. Yep. I did it. I hated checking my credit card balances. I hated like logging in every week to check if they recorded or charged me correctly. That, that just, it irked me so much that I was so scared. But I think that's a really great point that you made where you just have to get started. It was so nerve wracking to me at first, but I stuck with it. I made it a routine to do finance Sundays, even if it's not weekly, but even bi-weekly is good or even monthly is great. And I think when you do that, it opens up different avenues for you to think about other goals, right? So Neeks talk about, okay, well, I'm gonna open an account and just see what happens from there. And then once you start investing two weeks in, you're like, oh, okay, maybe this should be more so of a purposeful investment, right? Like, what is my goal? So then you start thinking about other things that really ties into your ultimate goal. So I think those are all really, really great points. And I love the Finance Sunday tips where you just go into your bank account and see like if there's any weird charges or you know how you're doing with your budgeting and everything. And then even seeing, okay, like, do I have room this month to invest more this month, right? Like, do I need to cut back on everything? So it's that time of reflection on Sundays that really kind of opens up your mindset to maybe thinking about your bigger goals of investing and bigger goals of financial literacy. So I love it. Oh my God, we should do another episode on finance Sundays. Even if it's not on Sunday, even if you do it once a month, it's still a step in the right direction in terms of healthy habits with your money. Oh my God. When I started with this whole finance journey, like I would sit on my Excel sheet and panic. (laughs) Yep. (laughs) Full on panicking i'm like so i spent 80 dollars on uber eats on friday Friday. and saturday and sunday but it's fine i had fun i had fun and now i'm living with the consequences and then i was like i don't know where to start and i was like uh, then i started thinking on my income i'm like did i even make enough like can i even sustain this lifestyle like what is a good interest rate oh my god once you start i promise that is and this is why we started the podcast, because you, once you start out on something, it gets yeah. a lot easier. That's a really good but, point, yeah. Mm-hmm. We will definitely make another episode on Finance Sundays and give you kind of little tips and tricks, but we're so excited. Thinking of, like, struggles, right? Mm-hmm. What were some of your barriers to investing And did you face any criticism uh, when you first started? Uh, was there any setbacks? Yeah. Because it's not all, like, you know... It's not like I put a hundred dollars in and yeah. not Elon Musk. No, like stonks. <laughs> yeah, stonks. I think that's a really good question and something that a lot of new beginners will definitely face and struggle with. I think in terms of my story and some of the criticism and more so like the barriers that I faced when I first started was more so my circle of friends did not talk about investing at Mm -hmm. all it was like my girlfriends it between us it was a very much taboo topic like you know how you'd have a group of friends and you know someone is well off but then there's also some people that are not as well off as the other person and so you know when you go out to eat it's like you kind of have to pick up more of the portion of the check than the other person and so because of that 
like you could kind of tell that like that person wasn't financially well off and because of that we didn't talk about finances at all like we didn't want to talk about investing and everything because when we did it almost struck a chord with her because she didn't have enough money to invest to begin with is that me no it's not you (laughs) (laughs) no i had to pick up her tab be thinking all the times you paid for my dinners (laughs) They didn't, we didn't want to talk about it. And because of that, we never talked about it. And then it wasn't mm-hmm. until my boyfriend, it wasn't until I met his friends. And then yep. I started to notice how often they talked about investing, where it was such a regular topic when they were eating, when they were going out to eat, they'd be like, oh, you know, back then it was five years ago, wheat stocks were really popular. And because of that, yep. they're like, oh, you know, have you heard about X? this stock have you heard about this wheat stock oh this is how my portfolio is doing and I was sitting there I was like can I can they talk about this you know I, I always thought it was something internal that you only you only have the password for it on your phone right you don't really show anyone else your portfolio and how well you're doing and because of that I think that's when my mindset started to shift where I saw his friends were so open to talking about it, so open to sharing advice and sharing tips and like supporting each other. And they're like, oh, like they open it up to me. They're like, oh, like, you know, are you investing in anything? And back then, five years ago, obviously not. I didn't even know where to begin. I didn't even know what they were talking about. How do I invest? Like I was so ready to take a hundred dollar cash go to my RBC branch and say, hey, give me that stock, right? (laughs) Yeah, so that was how I initially started off. I had, I didn't talk about it. I thought we weren't supposed to talk about it because none of my friends did. But is that something that was also similar to you where you kind of didn't talk about it in your circle as well? Mm Mm-hmm, really similar. Yeah. In all my girlfriends in the past. Are you subtweeting me? I so did. <laughs> um, yeah, this bitch. She no. did it. I um, had to pick up her tab. Um, <laughs> oh. <laughs> it has violent flashbacks. That is so funny because um, I always mm-hmm. heard whispers of investing. It was always men and it was always them talking about portfolios. And you know what? It didn't even matter what age. Here's the craziest part. I was like, it didn't even matter which age bracket they were in. It's like the young men could talk to the old men about their investing strategies and the yeah. old can give back to the yeah. younger generation. And then within that younger generation, it's like they get to talk about st- stocks. The hardest part was not being able to participate. Why is it that you as a male get to have the privilege opening up that conversation so freely and talking about it? Why is it that there is no taboo-ness to it? And why is it that you guys can champion each other? You and I never talked about it. Yeah. And then it's weird. And you know what the weirdest thing? We're both in commerce. Right. We still. Yeah. In university, we never talked about it. We never talked about it. And then, okay, if we never talk about it, then it leads, again, snowball effect. You don't mm-hmm. have ways of trying to figure out how to make the money, too. Mm-hmm. In different avenues. So I think that really got me thinking of like, oh, that's really strange. And then when I started participating and opening up my accounts and all that stuff, I think there was so much barriers within myself. Am I allowed to talk about it? Am I doing the right thing? And also, can I speak about my wins freely? Yeah. Can I talk about, hey, I had a better return. Yeah. Because remember, I and you and everybody listening, you offer a different perspective of how you see the market going. You might work in a certain sector, right? You could work in the oil and gas sector. You can work in the renewables. You can work in the CPG Mm -hmm. companies. Like You offer something that is so unique to your situation that you can have insight to what's going on. Or you can do research in things that were so finite and so specific, right? For the first time, I am researching things that are so niche that basically got a better return. Mm -hmm. And, oh, maybe I can just, like, say whatever I want to say. And then I want to get into dividend stocks and stuff. Yeah, and someone literally said, like, oh, what are you going to be, the next Warren Buffett? 
like in a condescending way and it's just like yeah why why can't i Mm-hmm. Not like, you know, why can't I? Like, obviously, you and I know. Maybe one day. But it's <laughs> like. I'm knocking on wood right now. Maybe this person actually has good ideas, regardless of their gender and regardless of how long they've been doing it. Maybe they actually have a good perspective as to what's going on. And maybe they actually can pick a good stock, too. Yeah. Regardless of their experience and all that. I did go to business school. <laughs> like, I did. Like, I know how to read a balance sheet. Like, I know how to do certain things. But that should not have discredited my pickings right yeah. and that should not discredit my knowledge right mm-hmm. but sometimes it does and the internal dialogue which i think you should really definitely talk about is it can be really damning it can be really hurtful in such a way because you actually put yourself back yeah exactly i think that's a really good point when i first thought about investing i always doubted myself First of all, am I following like the legal requirements? Like there's so many like Canadian nuances that you have to do, right? With your tax returns, with like reporting your taxes and everything. What really struck a chord with me was both of us that we talked about because none of our friend groups talked about it and because it was such a taboo topic to talk about our winnings and to t- even talk about our investment in general and our account and portfolio, etc. I think one of the things that really stuck out to me was how my mindset went from, oh, I I can't talk about it with any of my friends to eventually opening up to Neeks and asking her, hey, do you like, who's your bank account with? Like, it was such a weird question, but I was so curious because we were both in commerce and I don't think we ever talked about it until even end of fourth year slash until after we graduated from undergrad that's when we became serious investors per se but i remember i just asked her a really simple question like and i love that mindset when you know when i have a question like i would just go to neeks with a bank account or like with like something investment related she's like oh i don't know like we'll figure it out together as we go since we both don't know but like we're here to support each other on each other's investment journey and because of that it's like obviously whenever she has a question like with Serb for example like I was there for her right like I was like oh like here like I found this let me know how it is right and likewise when I had a question for Neeks like she was there for me so I think that internal dialogue changed where I was like oh you know maybe I do know something to help my friend and maybe I can not support her, even if I just find an article online, even though I may not be in the exact same situation, but I still try to find resources and still try to find ways to support you and my other friends as well. I'm definitely more open to talking about it now. That's really good when it comes to shifting mindsets and talk about some wins. I know it's a little bit doom and gloom, you yeah. know, I think, again, snowball effect. Yeah. Once you start, yeah. Right. Once I started, we had some common ground. Right. And now we are in healthier habits yeah. of being like, oh, are we saving enough? Are you taking mm-hmm. the time to look at your finances? And then also, can we change the stereotype that we always have to be in competition of each other? Right. Yeah. Right. Why can't we just help each other? And then both of us can go on our yachts one yeah, day. Exactly. <laughs> right. You know I mean? Yeah. Like whenever Neeks asks me a question, I'm not like, figure it out for yourself. Like, I'm not going to help you. Like, you know, it doesn't really help either of us. It's like, us. I want my friends to succeed. I want my friends to be rich. It's always good to know somebody with a yacht. Okay. So it's a little demon and glam right now, yeah. but there are certain things like our friendship and like this podcast i feel like that is going in the right direction of like where we want to push the world right we want to push the world of like you can talk about your finances as a woman and like you can actually break barriers that way and within yourself and outside talking about breaking barriers something really exciting happened yes this week tell us or do you want to oh wait no you tell us (laughs) yeah So one of the most exciting things happened this week was Bumble CEO Whitney Wolf Heard was basically the first woman and the youngest woman to become a billionaire. And she was one of the first women and the youngest to actually IPO her company and start trading on the NASDAQ. I find that incredibly, incredibly satisfying. Tell me how you felt when you heard that news 
I think I just felt really hopeful. When I first saw the photo, I was like, it really struck with me too, because I was like, I noticed her child and I'm like, oh, like she's a mom. She, she has a family. Being a mom is a whole other full-time job as well. On top of that, she led her company to success. And I think the one word that just comes to me at that moment, I was like, I feel hopeful for myself and for other women out there who are not only in the finance field, but trying to make it to the top of any field that they are at. How did you feel when you first saw that? I was like, it's about time. It was like, I was like, it's about time that mm -hmm. these women are out there. Basically, you're, what you're doing is opening the door, right? Once you open the door, mm -hmm. many will actually be able to walk through it. It kind of reminds me of the beginning of our podcast. I don't know if we mentioned this, but when I was like thinking about stocks, it's always like you have a stereotype that it's like it's always a man in his suit wearing black. They're all wearing black. And she, she's wearing this bright yellow coat. She's really commanding the stage like the inner like basically an international stage of saying that like i could do it i have a tech company i'm a great leader why is it only just a certain persona of, or a stereotype that can get to that level right it's like you have somebody that you actually can look at in a space that you normally don't see them in it's just going to lead more women through that door yeah it's a great it's a great story and it's a great lesson that if we keep up the conversation, if you're able to get into those circles or create your own circle. Like we did. <laughs> like we did. Even right? though two might not be a circle. <laughs> <laughs> it's a very lopsided circle. Yes. But it's like someone's in the circle. Like someone is in that realm that we can identify with and that looks like us more or less. It's almost like going back to your friend's table, right? You are in that circle, but you have nothing to contribute. But now you're in the circle and you can actually contribute. And then you can create your own circle to contribute a little bit more. For sure. And that's great. That's great. Oh. Like literally. What about so that nice. Wealth Simple news that you read the other day? So the reason why I love Wealth Simple magazine is they actually give the lifestyle aspect of money. Because remember when you like put aside money mm -hmm. to invest, you're hoping the money will do something for you later on to give you access to certain other things. So while simple, actually the magazine itself gives you mm -hmm. a lot more different perspectives of how people are with money, their relationship with money, what they end up doing. Yeah. And they basically had this great article that came out in 2018 and it's titled, most of our clients are men. We want to, we wanted to sure. figure out the problem. It's pretty yeah. doom and gloom, <laughs> not going to say, not going to lie. It's a little doom and gloom. But one thing I had to say was it was really interesting to know that by 2024, which is not that even far away, that's like three years, right? Mm -hmm. Canadian women will now hold half of the country's private mm -hmm. wealth. And basically women are investing and investing young and they're starting at the age of 25 yeah so when i was kind of looking back at the article i was like skimming it again i was like oh my god core and i are part of the statistics that are in the right direction that we mm -hmm. are taking our money and doing something with yeah, it, it to is. guarantee us a better future and that's what i thought was really interesting was we're finally on the right side of statistics <laughs> you know it's not it's not the doom and gloom and we're below 25 and that gave me even more hope because i was like wow you and i started much much younger i think another great point that i kind of read in the article was more so the lifestyle aspect as well but they're talking about kind of how to change and they said we think the first step toward change is what you're doing right now. Educating yourself, starting the conversation. And I think that's a really great point that they make. Even though we're not 25 yet, like, you know, we started investing earlier than that. Mm -hmm. I think our conversation could have been done years ago, right? It could have been done even in first year, for example, when we started to think about investing. And when we started to have these conversations in first year, 
I keep hearing like the best time to start investing was 10 years ago. The second best time is now. And it just resonates with me so much. And I hope it also resonates with our listeners as well. If you ever unsure about how much to put in, unsure about investing in general, just put even like $10 in to see, right? If you want to play around with your account to see like, oh, you know, what kind of portfolio do I want? Play with it, right? But you put even $1 in if they allow you, right? Put the minimum amount in and see where it kind of takes you. And then once you get more comfortable, start talking about it with your friends and say, hey, I played around with my Well Simple account today, right? Like, have you, like, have you done anything, right? Like, let me see what you've done, right? And then that's when the snowball starts to roll when you do it yourself. And then you bring a friend along, which is what both of us did. Like we started individually and then now we're together. We're enjoying slash not that enjoying the ride because <laughs> there are ups and downs. Yes, there's setbacks yeah. like anything in life. Yeah, mm-hmm. but we're in it together and we're educating ourselves and we're creating conversation, mm-hmm. which I think is the most important part. Exactly. So with that, we will link all the articles Mm -hmm. that we have mentioned in this podcast today. Happy investing to you if you are starting out today and and today is going to be the mark of a journey. Let's leave it off with invest with only what you can stomach of losing and then also read about it first and then stay subscribed and we will catch you in the next episode. Have a great day. Bye.